Yo, what is good, Rice Ball Gang? It's your boy Lil Chink. Today I'm joined with Hasten as always. Gang. Anyway, today we do have some more Demon Slayer. And also today we are going to be finishing Demon Slayer until season two comes out. But don't worry, Demon Slayer is isn't gonna go away on the channel just yet. I have three more future videos planned for demon slayer pretty much after we finish it in a couple days i'll watch the trailer for the movies and kind of have a discussion after we watch it too um also i kind of wanted to do a video on like my thoughts after watching demon slayer also like our speculations on what we think is going to happen in season two and also something else that i'm not gonna say just yet because mm. I'm, I'm planning it something in the works so basically what happened last time is we got to see kano's backstory and it was really sad because she didn't have a name her parents beat her and was basically sold as a child slave but luckily shinobu and her sister came in clutch and took her away so that, that was kind of cool we did get to see more about like her backstory and stuff and why she kind of looks glazed <laughs> it's it's messed up saying that but she does look glazed and also tanjiro and inosuke got their nichirins fixed uh so yeah that, that was basically it so before we get into it if you guys are new to the channel and you do enjoy make sure you drop a like and subscribe check out my boy hasten his link will be in the description down below but anyway let's just get right into it let's get it a few months earlier. Oh. Whoa. Bro. Where is this? Lower one. So we have the Kizuki. Oh, Damn. shit. Who is this? Whoa. Dude, this is trippy. Kind of makes me sick a bit. Dude, I'm getting, like, Padma inverted vibes. Yeah. You know how it's, like, with the trippy, like, up and down? Yeah. Oh, shit. Was number five Rui? Yeah. What the fuck? That looks like fucking Muzan. What the fuck? <laughs> So that's Muzan! <laughs> Why is he a chick? It's Orochimaru. Bro, he's a fucking trap! <laughs> oh shit. Dude, he's definitely angry at them for some reason. Dude, we got clowned on. Oh! Oh shit. Yep. Damn, so they, they've been slacking, bro. Yeah, they made it to the 12 and they just started slacking. Because, <laughs> I mean, I guess what what else can they do from there? It's not like they can progress. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, I guess they could compete for ranks, but they have been pretty weak. Or, well, not weak, no. but... If a Hashira is able to nonchalantly just walk in there and kill one of them like it's nothing, yeah, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> yeah. So, but the main question I want to know is why in the hell does Muzan look like a fucking woman? Like this man had a sex change midway through the series. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Damn. Damn. So yeah, that's definitely bad because basically if even the lower half of the Kizuki can't even compete with the Hashiras, like that title basically means nothing. Oh shit! I would not shit shit talk this man even in your mind. This dude done fucked up. Oh! What the fuck is that? Oh! Oh shit! My camera ran out of memory card space just now. <laughs> you you're 128 gig? Yeah. Ew. 
Why does he sound like that? Raspy ass voice. Who's on kind of bad though? Oh shit! It's too. Oh! I mean, yeah, if they are running away, no shit, Muzan's gonna be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> it's either die by Hashida or die by Muzan, pick your poison. Because basically, in a way, by, by doing that, it, they kind of are, like, defying him. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my oh! God! What is that? Ew. It's like a fucking, like, Kagune from Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> oh! <laughs> And that basically proves his point right there. He do be running though. Oh my god! Oh, that's a that's a dude. Uh oh. Oh! Oh! Oh shit! Oh my god! Dude, this just took one of the biggest turns. Like it was a slice of life thing, kind of like with training, and now moves on slaughtering everyone. <laughs> Oh, um, um, yeah, it's not like people talking or asking from him. Damare, Nani Damn, <laughs> this man definitely has a god complex. Oh, my God, dude. Ew. I feel like they kind of are dumb a little bit, to yeah. be honest. Because it's like they forgot everything they're not supposed to do. Yeah, you don't even talk to the man. Don't even talk to him. You can't reason with him. Dude, he's like fangirling over Muzan. What the fuck? Oh! Bro! This man's a simp! So he's the lowest ranked of all the keys to key. I mean, although that shit is fucking weird as hell, I mean, it's probably that's probably the best thing to do for him in the in this situation. Yeah. Is to be like the biggest fucking simp. <laughs> yeah. Or like <laughs> like Muzan literally turned into Pokemon, bro. <laughs> At this rate, the first, the, the lower first is going to give Zenitsu a run for his money. This man just brought the meaning of simp to a whole nother level. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh or di did he inject him with blood? Ooh! Oh! Tanjiro! 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 Oh, shit! Damn! So he just dumped him back into the city. So you know what that kind of reminded me of? Uh, it, it reminded me of the uh, the bongo demon or the drum demon. Yeah, was it like Tsudu or Tsuzumi or something like that? But like on a whole nother level. Yeah. So Muzan basically, I guess he has like another dimension where he can just summon them. That was fucking insane. <laughs> like, like I said earlier, Literally coming from the past like two or three episodes where it was just like Tanjiro trying to recover and gain his strength back to fucking Muzan slaughtering the fucking lower half of the Kizuki. Oh, so is it time to go on another mission? Ooh. Oh, Rikoku! Bro, that means Tanjiro can actually find more about uh Hinokami, maybe. Maybe if you can figure out the difference between fire and flame breathing. Mm-hmm. Cause Shinobu pointed him or pointed Tanjiro to go talk to him. Shinobu ga Tanjiro Hell yeah. Uh-oh. Does he know about that? That piqued the master's interest. Ooh. Damn. 
I wonder if he knows about fire breathing or Tanjiro's dad. Ah, she's still not speaking. <laughs> oh, the coin? What's she deciding on? Oh! Look at his face. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, he flicked that high. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. だよ。俺に裏が出ても表が出るまで何度でも投げ続けようと思ってたから。Damn。Oh I mean, that's his only option, to be honest, from who, <laughs> from who we've seen. I'm not saying it's a bad choice or anything, but I, 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 I see. I, I could ship that. I could ship that. Nah, bro, that that was wholesome. Cause see how like how empty she was and stuff. That's the. I think that's the first person that's ever done that to her. Like since Kocho gave her like the coin thing, everybody just always accepted that's how she was. But Tanjiro already in like less than five minutes changed something in her eyes that we've never seen yeah because at that moment it went from emptiness to like something was there like that's that tiny little sparkle and i also like that connection too relating it back to how shinobu compared tanjiro to her sister oh true because it's like it's like taking her decision making to a different level because when I think her name was Kana A. She when she first gave Kana O the coin, it was to help her make like basic decisions on her own because all her life she had never been able to make a decision for herself. It's always been for other people. But now that like Shinobu has left her sister's dream to Tanjiro, it's like he helped her progress with her decision making. Yeah, to follow your voice to follow the heart instead. But I like how Tanjiro is like helping everyone. Like it may seem like nothing, but it probably helped them a lot tremendously, like with their mental and stuff. Yeah, it's like indirect too. He's not even trying to. He's not like I'm gonna help them. He's just like being himself. Yeah, yeah. Like that just shows like how good of a person he is. <laughs> what is this creature? <laughs> <laughs> Inosuke is so out of place here. Bro, he is. <laughs> oh, bro! <laughs> oh, so Tanjiro doesn't know either. <laughs> bro. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, the cops! They better run, bro! Get out of there! <laughs> Bro, <laughs> so I guess swords are illegal. I like how he still thinks it's a fucking creature. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> dude, this is so weird seeing them on a train. Bro, yeah, it is in civilization. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But he doesn't want to be away from her. And it's kind of like if, if Tanjiro dies, Nezuko's pretty much dead. Because who else is going to try to turn her back into a human? And like, I mean, you have Tamayo too, but... Yeah, it's like they ride together, they die together, I guess. <laughs> Damn, dude. Uh... It's so weird that we're already done with Demon Slayer, bro. Yeah. Bro, this is so- Oh, oh! Rikoku! The goat! Oh, shit! Oh! Okay. 
Bro, why does it have to end on this, man? I know. So before we wrap up the video, I think there are some end credits too. But man, I can't believe we're done with Demon Slayer already, bro. Like we, I think we legit started like a couple weeks ago. Damn, so yeah, we, we started Demon Slayer a month ago, bro. But it feels like we started it like yesterday, to be honest with you. I mean, this, this is a nice way to end it. Like I would have rather it have ended like this than it leaving on a cliffhanger if it showed like Muzan killing all the all the lower half of the kizuki yeah and like left off on that that would have been ass so i'm glad they showed that first this episode was pretty good but now they're on this train and i freaking love that pan shot at the end where it like where how tanjiro and zenitsu and inosuke were on like the end of the train and then it panned to the middle where rengoku was and then that freaking demon is on top of the train mm -hmm. so I don't know if this is gonna lead into where the movie like i don't know if the movie is supposed to be like a gateway for season two or if it's just like its own little deal um but i guess we'll find out whenever we watch the trailers and also too i don't think i'm gonna react to the movie i might uh if you guys want me to but if i do i'll probably split it up into different parts uh just for copyright reasons obviously but dude this is a good episode bro like moves on became a trap fucking slaughtered all of the half of the kizuki except one i kind of like Ta how tanjiro got to see like everybody at the mansion before he left so that was cool how he helped kano a lot and also the other girl and i hope we do get to see more of kano next season because i feel like at one point their their pads are gonna have to cross again and also, too, when Tanjiro was talking to Tomioka, Tomioka kind of reminds me of, like, an older brother for Tanjiro. Because I know they share, like, that bond of having, like, sharing the same teacher. But, I don't know, he just reminded me of, like, an older brother for Tanjiro for some reason. Yeah, it's cool that Tomioka was the first Demon Slayer we were introduced to. When he was, like, one of the, the, the top of the ranks, too. And then he's one of the last ones we left season one on. But hopefully Tanjiro can find out a little bit more about Hinokami from the Flame Hashira. I don't know if it'll have like any sort of connection, but I feel like it might have to because it's like they're both like fire. Also, too, I am kind of curious because you did bring up the fact that Tanjiro has a new Nichirin and his sword color may be different. So hopefully he does get that crimson just because I think that would fit so well. Because, obviously, Tanjiro comes from a lineage of those demon slayers with the red hair. Maybe it was some slight symbolism with, um, he had the black sword and they said the black sword, like, was super unlucky and everybody who got it, I think they said died. Or they said there was a lot of bad stigma around the black swords. So maybe that was some symbolism that, like, Tanjiro got through the first season and through all the hardships that he, was, that he had to face. Not all of them, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be multiple in season two, probably, but... But especially mm -hmm. with everything's going on, but he got through that and he's trained super hard. And he's got a lot stronger. So now, now he's worthy of the Crimson Sword or something. I don't know. Because Muzan, Muzan put a hit on Tanjiro, mm -hmm. bro. He was like, kill the boy with the earrings and I will give you more Yeah, blood. he definitely has a grudge for a specific reason. I, I guess we'll get more into that in the discussion video, but I definitely think there's some reasoning behind that. And also, too, me and Hasten have been, like, talking about a couple things as well that I want to leave for the discussion video. But, alright guys, so this is Future Chink and Hasten. Uh, one more thing I just wanted to add it, uh, because Inosuke and all them did get chased by the cops. I did look it up, and the reason for that is katanas were illegal at that point. Because the Japanese government took everyone's katanas away and destroyed them. So that basically explains why they were being chased by the cops. I just thought it was kind of like Inosuke acting like a clown. Uh -huh. Well, I think that's a part of it, too. But also, too, Zenitsu did bring up, like, them not being officially recognized by the government and that would also make sense too because if they banned like katanas and you have these people like walking around with swords and shit that are illegal that also <laughs> probably lessens their chances of getting backed by the government too because nobody believes that demons exist i guess could you imagine if they actually got tanjido like under arrest and, <laughs> and they look in the box and yeah. see a whole ass demon child <laughs> 
Bro, I know! Literally, Tanjiro could prove them to the government that the demons exist because yeah. of Nezuko. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like for sure at some point they're gonna fucking realize too that demons are real. And also too, this is like set in like 1912. I think the 1912s at this point. And World War One happened like 19 like 15 or some or, or somewhere around that time. So I'm gonna be I'm curious to see if maybe in season two it'll go into like the war, like the world war or like any, or we're gonna hear like any bits and pieces of that because I think that would be like really interesting. Can you imagine if demons are like in the fucking war, bro? <laughs> Muzan takes over Italy or something. Oh. Oh. Oh, is that Rengoku? Oh Hell shit! Yeah. Bro, he looks like a G. She the ground on fire? <laughs> Film adaption. Yeah, so oh. I think the next arc is gonna be in the movie. Okay, okay, fuck. Okay, so I guess we are gonna have to try and react to it. <laughs> um so that's actually kind of cool too because not a, I don't think a lot of anime movies really bridge seasons together. So Dude, that's going to be super sick, bro, cuz I want to see more of it. I want to see more of of the Hashiras and like what their powers are too. Imagine if Tanjiro uses Hinokami and like he he does like a combo attack with Rengoku, like oh. the double flames, bro. Bro, that was so sick. The Rengoku's flame breathing looked different than Tanjiro's fire breathing. That looked like everything was yeah. just melting, like the entire ground, the tile. It looked like lava. Yeah, that's dope. But anyway, guys, this is going to wrap up today's Demon Slayer reaction. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Check out my boy Hasten. His link will be in the description down below. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.